The food shortages of 2023. This is an extremely serious situation, and I have all the details right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now in this video, I want to discuss the details of a couple new reports, as well as a few interviews that were just conducted with dozens and dozens of farmers and their forecasts as far as 2023 goes and the extreme food shortages they are now predicting for all of us right here in the United States. This is a serious situation that I want to bring to your attention so let's get into it and discuss all the details however really fast before we do thank you so much for joining me if you're new here or if you haven't done so yet please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and because i am your one and only daily advocate i'm here for you right by your side each and every day watching all this new information hitting the wire doing the research and breaking it all down into these short videos so you can stay updated with what's actually going on as things are changing very rapidly we're getting new reports new announcements and new bills, packages, proposals, and amendments coming out on a very regular basis out of Congress, as well as new information out of the administration on a regular basis as well. I'm watching all of it and bringing you the updates right here in the video so you can stay updated with what's actually going on and most importantly, how it's going to impact you, your money, your benefits, your lifestyle, your bank account, and of course, just stay in tune with all of these changes. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet as it's totally free to do so. And also remember, I'm here for you in any way that I can be. That's my dedication, that's my commitment, and as always, that's my promise to you and everybody right here in the community. All right, let's get into it and talk about what these reports are now suggesting, as well as what these dozens and dozens of farmers are now saying about 2023 and their forecasts as far as food shortages. Now, you might be wondering, why would we ask the farmers? Why wouldn't we? I mean, let's be real for a second. The farmers are the producers of the food. Therefore, they have a pretty good idea, right? They are the ones to know if we're going to be having food shortages or not, because at the end of the day, they're the ones who basically produce all the food that we consume right here in the U.S. So we probably want to turn to the farmers because they have a pretty good idea of what's actually going on. Here's the thing. Now, these reports are coming out and showing these interviews from these dozens and dozens of farmers all across the country, and they're all pointing toward essentially the same thing, and the picture is not looking pretty good these days. Now, again, I want to make this very clear. I am not not here to instill fear in anybody, but rather I want to inform everybody of what's going on according to these reports and according to these interviews because we probably want to stay tuned with all of this information. It's very, very important. All right, so here's what's going on. These farmers are now suggesting we're likely going to be having some extreme food shortages in 2023 because of a variety of reasons, not just because of one or two reasons. There's a bunch of different reasons here. Number one, droughts all across the entire United States. Not a whole lot we can do about that, right? Now, of course, we can obviously just wait for some rain to come. We can possibly, you know, uh, implement some watering techniques, but at the end of the day, it takes a very long time and it's pretty difficult uh, for farmers to implement all of that over a long period of time because eventually you just kind of run out of water, right? So that is one major issue. However, on top of that, because we know as we've been covering here on the channel for a very long time now, the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates. Now, what does this mean and why does it impact farmers? How does this impact food production? Here's what happens. Most farmers, think about it. They spend a lot of money every single year operating all of their huge equipment that they, knew, uh, that they need to do to plant the fields, to harvest the crops and all kinds of things like that. They're actually, um, you know, they're, they're operating huge, huge machinery that runs on, you know, a lot of diesel fuel. It's also very, very expensive machinery, things like this. And it takes a lot of money to operate the farm on a regular basis, right? So a lot of these farmers take out huge, huge loans on a very, um, on a regular basis each and every year and they're short term loans, right? So each year they take out a huge loan and the whole idea is to, you know, plant the crops and to, you know, raise the herd of cattle or whatever they're raising at the time and then sell a bunch of that stuff at the end of the year, pay all the loans back and boom, they're all good to go. Well, here's the problem. As the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, the loans are getting more and more expensive because these loans that farmers are taking out are generally variable rates, uh, variable interest rate loans. Well, as a result of that, as the Fed continues to raise interest rates, it's just making it more and more expensive for these farmers to actually uh, borrow this money and then pay it back because they're paying so much money in interest. In fact, one of these reports are actually showing that just loan interest alone loan interest, not principal, nothing else, just the loan interest is expected to be $26.5 billion just for farmers this year. 
That's crazy. $26.5 billion just in interest on their loans. Super sad. And remember, these are the people producing all the food for us. So if they can't afford the loans, do you think they're going to continue taking them out? Probably not, right? So anyway, that is just one situation. Not only that, because of everything else going on globally, as well as here in the United States and supply chain issues, there's also been shortages of fertilizers. If they're able to get fertilizers, it's very, very expensive, right? Because prices have gone up, supply chain issues, the global situation, and as a result of that, fertilizers are getting more expensive. Therefore, um, well, it's making it less sustainable for farmers to buy all the fertilizer that they need to put on their, their fields and to make sure that they're, you know, getting the most crop or the most, um, you know, bumper crop, I guess you could say, right? Because they want to fertilize and of course they want to make it worth their efforts of planting the fields and things like that. So that is one issue as well. Now next, high fuel costs. Now we might be thinking, okay, gas prices have come, come down. Yeah, that's gas prices. Guess what? The machinery that they use does not generally run on gas. Sometimes it does, but generally it runs on diesel. Well, guess what? Diesel fuel is still very, very expensive right now. Well, as a result of that, again, all of these farmers are paying significantly higher prices for the diesel fuel that they put in their tractors and all of their machinery that they need to operate the farms on a daily basis, right? So again, not only that, supply chain issues of maybe seed and everything else that they need, again, to plant the crops, right? So you can clearly see here, these farmers are dealing with a variety of different headwinds. Number one, they borrow the money to buy the machinery, to buy the fertilizer, to buy the seed, to buy all the stuff that they need. And therefore they're paying more in interest on that, right? They're paying more and more as they drive their machinery around the field to plant the crops, to harvest the crop, to do all the stuff that they need, to feed the cattle, all kinds of stuff like that. It's costing more and more because of extremely high uh, diesel prices, right? So all of these things coming together, a lot of these farmers are thinking, what's the point here? All I'm doing is putting a ton of work in all throughout the entire year so that I can pay it all in interest and have basically nothing left at the end of the day, right? So it's not really making sense for a lot of farmers. Not to mention, uh, another statistic in one of these reports also came out and showed that herds right now, so like cattle herds are down across the entire country, 36%. Why? Well, here's why, because remember, the farmers got to feed the herd, right? It costs money to feed the herd. They also need to, you know, um, you know whether they uh, buy the hay or whatever the, the grass is, whatever it is that they feed them, you know, corn or whatever it happens to be, they need to either buy it and or grow it. And again, costs more to do that. So it costs more to feed more mouths, right? <laughs> Essentially what it comes down to, right? Kind of like a household with people, right? The more kids you have, the more people you have within a household, it kind of costs more money because there's more mouths to feed. Well, same thing with the herd of cattle, right? The more uh, mouths as you have to feed, again, cattle eat a lot more than people do, right? <laughs> I would hope so anyway. So they eat a ton. As a result of that, it costs more and more to sustain the herd. So therefore, they're selling off a lot of this herd. In fact, like I said, they're down 36%. That's a lot. That's a huge, huge percentage to be down, right? So as a result of that, remember this much. It's all simple economics. If there's less supply, and there's equal demand, prices must go higher, right? If there's less supply and more demand, prices must go significantly higher, right? And that's what we're seeing with uh, cattle herds being down 36% and possibly less crops being you know, planted and or um, harvested. Again, less uh, supply as in corn, soybean, wheat, barley, whatever else uh, is planted out there. Honestly, I know that I probably missed a few, but my point is less uh, supply being less crops being planted, less it's going to be harvested. Therefore, it means prices are going to be going significantly higher as well on a lot of different things. So that's also what's being forecast by a lot of these farmers. They're not only saying, we're gonna have some food shortages in 2023, but we're gonna see significantly higher prices because a lot of these farmers are saying, I don't even know if it's worth it anymore. I'm spending all this money uh, getting these huge, huge loans. And at the end of the day, I can't even pay them all back. You know what I mean? Because the herds are smaller, the crops are smaller, they're planting less. It's all coming in less because it's costing so much extra money right now for all of the reasons that I just laid out a few seconds ago. So you can clearly see the major, major headwinds that a lot of farmers are having right now. And this is what they're suggesting in these surveys and in, in these reports, as well as in the interviews with these dozens and dozens of farmers. So kind of a scary situation, but this is the fact of the matter. And this is what is really going on all across the entire country. It is getting more and more expensive. And as a result of farmers producing less, 
like I just said, it's all about supply and demand. Whether it's the cattle herd, again, more, more uh, bigger herd means, you know, more availability, means more supply, less prices, right? But again, if the herd is down significantly and if crop prices are down, or uh, sorry, if crop harvests are down and things like that, again, less supply, equal demand, more demand, it means prices must uh, continue to go up. It's simple economics. It's not farmers trying to rip people off. That's not it at all. That is in fact, not the case whatsoever at all. It's simply supply and demand, just like everything that we talk about, right? Simple supply and demand, supply uh, demand is outstripping supply therefore prices must continue to move higher so again super uh, basic stuff here when it comes down to simple economics but simple economics play the same role in farming as it does literally everything else so this is what they're now forecasting for 2023 and not necessarily a good thing because remember as well here in the united states how many growing seasons do we have one we have one growing season. I mean, maybe in the deep, deep south, maybe you get a little bit longer. But other than that, right here in the United States, you essentially get one growing season. If you don't make it rain in the growing season, guess what? That growing season is gone. And then that's it. Whatever we can harvest for one growing season, that's pretty much all we get. And again, maybe in some areas in the deep south, maybe you can keep growing a little bit longer. Maybe you can get a little bit more out of it. But for the most part, for the most uh, majority of the country, it's one. That's it. You get what you get for the year and that's it. You got to float for the rest of the year. So kind of a serious situation here. And when it comes down to it, farmers and farming is very, very important, especially for our supply when it comes down to food supply here in this country. Very important stuff. So Anyway, of course, I'll continue watching this here very closely as I do get more details on anything, whether it's the food supply, food shortages, anything like this, or any other details coming out of Congress, the administration, new bills, packages, proposals, amendments, anything else like that, as well as all these other reports coming out. Of course, I'm watching all of it very closely. I'm usually going across about 20 to 25, maybe even 30 different sources every single day, doing all this research and breaking it down for you and finding the best information that I can that I can share with you here in these short videos. So again, thanks so much for joining me. I truly do appreciate it. I want to help you out in any way that I can, as well as keep you informed of what is likely coming uh, over the coming weeks, days, months, you know, and through the course of the entire year. Anyway, I'm here for you no matter what. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other thousands and thousands of videos here on the channel. Until next time, enjoy your day. Have a good one, and I'll catch you again later in the next